न्यूज लाइव विद फराज शौकत अली ऑन टी वी वन And a very good evening to you, and a warm welcome to Newsline. My guest this evening is Member of Parliament Chandima Virakuri. Very good evening to you, Chandima, and thank you for coming. Good evening, Faraz. Thanks for the invite. Uh, absolute pleasure, because you see, uh, the mind is rather troubled uh, because there's so many things going on, and things that are meant to be are not happening. Um, we seem to be still struggling with the economy. Um, Although there are no gas queues and no petrol queues, but we have got petrol rationing. So I thought, Chandima Virakodi, I'm asking you if you could give me a roundup of the various events that's happening in terms of politics and so on. Well, in this country, there was economic instability and political instability mm. in a very uh, deep, grave way, mm. but. at the moment i must say in fairness uh, as seen by an ordinary member of general public mm. there is some stability mm. in in your direct eyes mm. you don't see uh, queues you don't see uh, protest mm. you see some government but the issue that this country expects mm. and this government and the president was mandated by the by the country at the moment mm. was to bring about stability and progress mm. firstly to have a proper economic policy yeah that needs to be implemented yes and then Uh, democracy and transparency but unfortunately now what is in the the government mm. in the in the in the mind and the ulterior motive of the government is to devise a mechanism to prolong their period in power mm-hmm. if possible to try and get an extension of the term of the government and the president either uh, by uh, using a gimmick or by trying to fathom support of various parties to uh, win a future future election mm. and as we as we see mm. the rights of the people are democratic rights are being deprived of we don't see uh, foreign remittances increasing in a uh, manner that anyone can be convinced that it is done the, the economy is taken forward with a vision now we uh, the, if you look at the half yearly report there had been some income that has come through tourism but unfortunately like our traditional export crops are suffering now let's take the the tea industry remittances have dropped and when you go to the grassroots the the production has lost and the bought leaf prices are dropping rapidly so that the people the, the growers find it difficult mm. and you take uh, cinnamon cinnamon prices have dropped and the farmers or the planters find it difficult to continue in plantation but why has cinnamon prices drop so the i mean the the market the government duty is to facilitate in uh, promoting markets yeah but unfortunately we are st- stuck with the traditional age old markets mm-hmm. but we have not done anything as regards uh, value addition finding markets mm. Uh, and uh, the growers continue to grow more and more because they haven't got a, a proper direction right and like other uh, other crops also uh, like um, uh, the the other export crop mm. prices you take rubber you get to take uh, you call goraka yes you take uh, arikanath all the prices are dropping 
So the income there is also rapidly dropping. Hmm. And if you take even and also in tourism, yeah. okay, we are like numbers we see. Yeah. But it is so unfortunate that most tourists who arrive in the country are not coming here to spend, but they are coming here to generate money. Of course, let's say I love them to generate money, hmm. but collect taxes from them. As government revenue, but unfortunately, by generating they, money, they are into business. Now oh, you go to our areas. Most of the uh, the the hotels and tourism enterprise that is doing well, that attracts crowd, are run by the foreigners. I mean, okay, any investor should be able to run their business in the, this country. That mm. is how we advance. But we still don't have a mechanism to collect revenue taxes. From, from them, those people. from those people. So a Sri Lankan who's into the same business has to pay thousand and one taxes. Hmm. But the lucky <coughs> white tourist who is not breaking the immigration loop, yeah, who is not even on a resident visa, right. who is still a tourist, earns a lot of money and enjoys life, which is not right by the country, by the people, and hmm. by the industry. So we should have a so why is Sri Lanka looking askance then? Why isn't Sri Lanka doing, why isn't the tourist board doing something about it? Well, uh, that's a question. I mean, it is, you, we have been, because we, we no, have, no, we, no person shall make available a service to a tourist, to a foreigner, without registering with the Sri Lanka tourism board. Uh, it's like this, most of these uh, so-called hotels are not registered oh. and tourist board, of course, I must say in fairness, they are trying their best to uh, get them registered, mm. complain about these, even at the consultative committee, we take up issues, when we take up issues, the minister also gives a hearing, mm. but it's so unfortunate, the, uh, the other uh, companies, yeah. uh, other ministries that need to take action, uh, are not coordinating. So the, 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 the whole side, that means the whole nation, is let down by some officials paid by the government, paid by us, but who are uh, falling well below the delivery timeline for them. Yeah, that I see as, a, as one of the key reasons for uh, our downfall. Mm. And it is so unfortunate, the, the collective nature uh, in the cabinet is not seen. Now even recently now we saw like you we were shocked to hear uh, from the Minister of Power and Energy openly on stage that there be a power cut. Of course subsequently he gave reasons, justification and said no there will not be a power cut. But we saw uh, a couple of weeks back the Minister of Power and Energy openly came out and said that there will be a power cut in the South. Yes. And then the, the Minister of Agriculture, who was sitting on, in the same cabinet, came out and said that there will be a food shortage. Mm. And the Minister of Irrigation, who was also in the same cabinet, said that there will be a water shortage. So when people outside hear that, mm. I mean, especially the, the last season, tourism season, uh, was not successful due to the fact that there were uh, long queues and unavailability of food. Mm. But this is the time that uh, the, the tourists who will be coming to the southern part of the country are uh, like re reserving their tickets. So when they go online to find out as to whether the country has improved, mm. when, you hear, when they hear this type of thing, it's detriment to the country. Mm. So, I mean, the government should be more responsible. Mm when they uh, take up matters outside. Whatever that the opposition says, people outside may not take serious, but when it is said by the members of the cabinet, it is of invariably detrimental to the country and to our economy and our efforts to uh, come up as a mm. nation. Mm. So, so you know, when these three ministers came and told us about the shortages in each of their ministries, were they jesting or were they telling the truth? I mean, uh, that they should know, I mean, as 
that there is a thing called cabinet collectivity. Yeah. And they should know, the, the government should know to restrict, confine whatever debates and differences of opinion to the ca within the cabinet. Hmm. They should not, when they go to take it up outside, what happens? I mean, whatever support that we give as the opposition in order to uh, bring this country back to what it was at least, yeah. Uh, is uh, miserably failed uh, due to the conduct of the government. Mm. So, I, f I, I would like to emphasize mm. that the government should be more responsible, government should be able to manage affairs effectively, government should uh, have a vision and a mission and they must uh, carry forward uh, to the benefit of the country. Um. But in the meantime, uh, yes, I'll ask you this before the break. In the meantime, we have the people's constitutional right to have elections. The people have been denied that. I think the, I'm right in saying that the provincial council elections is like five years too late. And... S simultaneously, the minority parties in the north, northeast, you know, the former conflict areas and all of that, they continue to almost whinge and whine for devolution of power and so on. But the first thing they should be doing is for them to be able to implement all that, they need to have the provincial councils going. Am I wrong or, you know, is, am I living in some other world? No, I'm, to, you're, you're right. Not only the provincial council elections, but we haven't held the local government elections. There you go. And you go. provincial elections are long overdue. And to tell you, we are not in a position to hold local provincial council elections, even if the the election commission wants to hold elections. Because? Because of, the, because of a uh, issue uh, that has been created in parliament through an attempt to amend the Provincial Council Elections Act. But that, that, that's, that's surely that's against the constitution. That obviously against is against the, the concept of democracy. Yeah. The, the, the Prime Minister, then Prime Minister, who is the present president, yeah. was required to submit the final report within a stipulated period, if I remember right, as per the provisions of the constitution, it is three months. Mm -hmm. We was to present that final report to the speaker, which he hasn't done to date. Now it's the about the fourth, three, third or fourth prime minister after he left as prime minister. Mm. But to date, that report hasn't come, and the 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 amendment stands unresolved as yet. So, so what's happened to this requirement? Has it been shoved in some drawer and forgotten? No all about one, it? no one talks about it. But without giving a solution to that. Like you discuss having uh, uh, devolution, like implementing 13th Amendment. Yes, yes. And, and uh, discuss about devolution. We discuss about it at various levels within the country. At when you go to the north, we, uh, leaders say one thing. When the leaders go to the south, they say some other thing. Mm. When they go to India, they take up one issue. Yeah. They go to China, they take up another issue. Then with Tamil parties, the, the leaders, government meet Tamil parties, members separately, Muslim members separately. And single, they never meet the single leaders, all this. So, by like the dividing, it's, it's like what the Sudha did long years ago. Divide and, divide and rule. rule. You should not be dividing. You can't resolve issues by dividing and, me, and, 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 and trying to talk to people. Uh, uh, in, 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 in concealed areas confined only to those groups. Mm. We must be able to discuss things openly and try to resolve. I mean, if we can't win confidence of the people, mm. whether they are single East Tamils, Muslims, workers or whoever, mm. as Sri Lankan, if they don't feel Sri Lanka their home, if they don't feel confident living together with uh, uh, each other. Mm. Whatever law that we pass, we will not see a solution to the issue. 
So winning confidence and real uh, promoting real result, reconciliation mm. is a must. I don't. We don't say now. The best example was when the president before just before the president visited uh, uh, India, a uh, convicted criminal uh, who was responsible for the central bank bomb blast was released. Mm. Now central bank bomb killed a lot of people. Yeah. And still, there are people who have uh, who are disabled. Life, yeah, yeah life, life changing. Yeah, some are still injuries. blind. Some right. still don't have like so many who are disabled. Yeah, so many families suffered, and their of course, whole lives have been changed. Changed, of course. I mean, we should not be carrying hatred, anger continuously. But the government, before the 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 convicted criminal was released. Government would have started a process of reconciliation. Would have discussed the issue with the people and would have got the people to give a pardon. Mm. At least the affected families mm. to think. I mean, these are people, Sri Lankan people. They are not bad people. They can forget now. Now let's look at uh, former they president. They can forgive, I suppose. Yeah. Now let's look at former president Chandrika Bandaranaike. She lost his eye, mm. but she's uh, all out to. Uh, uh, promote reconciliation okay. and look at the leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa. Mm. He lost his father, which changed his life. Yeah. But with all that, he is willing to uh, promote reconciliation. I think so we are in a very uh, important and touching uh, moment of the discussion, but we need to go for a break. Let's have a peek at this evening's headline news from that wonderful primetime news team. And we'll be right back with Chandima Virakkoli. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV1. Water Supply Board urges people to use water sparingly. UNP to amend party constitution aiming the elections. President meets Sri Lanka Padujana Peramuna regional heads. What happened to the Asbasuma and Samurdi funds? Hi guys, see you at the Thomian Fun Fair on the 18th of August. We'll see you this Friday at the St. Thomas College ground for the Thomian Fun Fair. It's our fun fun. See you. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali on TV1. And welcome back to Newsline. I'm in conversation with Chandima Virakuri, Member of Parliament. Um, now then, so, so you, you, that was very interesting what you were actually saying, that uh, uh, none of this makes any sense. Yeah, the, the fact that, and, and if you may look at it from the Indian perspective, yeah. they would have definitely looked at it as a, as a gimmick. Right. Look here, this man, before he comes to meet, he's trying to impress us yeah. by releasing a man who is a convicted criminal to show, okay, we are concerned about the, the, the Tamil community. But it is not so. The anger that has been there uh, in, uh, in, within the families of those who were uh, killed. killed and Maimed. affected yeah. would have, like, whatever that has been dying down, would have been rekindled. Uh, rekind yeah. yeah. So that is not the way, I, as I believe, uh, uh, the, the way to uh, strengthen reconciliation, promote reconciliation is, is and he, to, in order to resolve this issue. I, I am not sure and I'd be delighted to hear from members of the public, 0772-300-305. But I'd, you know, it doesn't have to be now, but it can be in a few days' time even. Please contact us and tell us if you know people who've been affected in the central bank bombing all those years ago. And I'd like to know what financial recompense has been given to these people who were affected by that bombing incident. Does the government give you adequate money or is it a long, drawn, uh, long haul in trying to get money each and every month? 
Do they help you with your medicines? What is it? I'd like to hear from that. 0772 300 and we'll take it up on a different program uh, or at another time. But, you know, uh, uh, when you were saying that, I remembered what uh, uh, Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit said to me, and that is that the Catholic Church uh, has got uh, uh, many, many commitments after the Easter bombing. Yeah. Now, if not for the Catholic Church and their funds that uh, lots of people donated money and, you know, they have invested that in the government and that those monies go a long way to help pay for the care of those people who were not killed, but who were maimed and who have got life changing uh, sort of uh, illnesses and damages to them. So if the Catholic Church wasn't there, those people's trouble would be not double, treble, but, you know, many times. No, even, even about them, like, okay, the church has been there, the cardinal has been there to uh, console, try to console them and financially support them. But yeah. the loss is loss. Like, some have lost their parents, children, some have lost their children, yeah. some are disabled. You know that... Uh, 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 Agani will be there in them forever. So, mm. I mean, this doesn't mean that we should make use that and, you know, try to uh, claim a pot of flesh. We should not try to uh, promote hatred among communities, among groups, people. But there is a way in which that people should be uh, prepared to give a pardon to those who were misled and those who were responsible. But it, that that has not been done. That is the issue now. Now, uh, the, okay, now the terrorist, uh, terrorism was eradicated. Look, Sri Sri Lanka, I, I, I'm, I'm listening to what people. you're saying. I'm listening to what you're saying. I met a victim of the Easter bombing, of this tragedy. Uh, you know, she, for the rest of her life, she's going to be confined to a bed and thanks to the church you know she's got a literally all singing all dancing bed you know it, it moves up it moves down and she can uh, it makes it uh, as comfortable as possible within the constraints but she's got little children she can't do this and hug them yeah no i mean that's that's what i mean this this right. country has quite a lot of such cases now we had a uh, issue of terrorism so many soldiers we lost. Yes. Families are affected. Some are still disabled. Yeah. And in the north also, it's, lots the, same of people, thing. it's the same thing, yeah. whether they are terrorists or civilians or whoever. A yeah. lot of loss is caused to the families. Yeah. So that now, now there is no terrorism. That has come to an end. Yeah. Of course, those people, the, the scars in them uh, is still there. But we are living in a, a free society. But subsequent to uh, the the subsequent to terrorist uh, eradication of terrorism, government has not effectively uh, del delivered yeah. towards uh, settlement mm. to settlement so that there will be uh, reconciliation. Mm. I mean that is very unfortunate. We should not be uh, letting. Uh, certain politicians to make use of this op this situation in order to grab power and to take the country down the drain. Mm. So that is something that all of us should understand. In order to reach there, we have to all make uh, sacrifices. So as as uh, the Sinhalese Buddhist uh, Southern community, we have to uh, sacrifice certain things. Likewise. The, 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 the other communities also uh, should be ready to come to a middle to settle this issue. But unfortunately, there are people, I mean, we, we, we see some of the, the even the minority mem members of parliament to represent uh, the, the northern community. They lead luxurious life here. They, are, they don't understand the real issues of the people. But they are trying to agitate issues for their benefit, which is not right. I mean, likewise, there are southern politicians also mm. 
who for their political gain benefit I mean I must tell you what the, the former president did was not right I mean we have to be able to live in this country as Sinhalese, Tamils, Muslims as Sri Lankans we should not try to divide we should not try to say this is our land your second class citizens mm. that mentality is what has brought the, our country to this level mm. for three decades we suffered mm. do you want uh, our children grandchildren also to go through the same you uh, know when Gotabi Rajapaksa won and uh, he made that speech I called it an infamous speech but anyway you know when he made that speech did you as a Sinhalese politician or even as a Sri Lankan citizen did you kind of cringe when he said I was elected by the majority I was like I was really like sad as a Sri Lankan you know why I mean okay let's say to win elections certain people make you use use certain things certain yeah. strategy yeah but this is after you are elected with 6.9 million people supporting you and then you say something to like irritate irritate the other communities yes. and this sitting i can remember the sitting uh, secretary of defense once he came on tv and he was referring to suresh sale there was some allegation mm -hmm. some time back he said uh, openly on media suresh sale uh, cannot be uh, a, a person who's uh, against the country he is a patriot for the simple reason that he is married to a buddhist and his children are buddhist his wife is a singalese so i was shocked to hear sri lankan so, so Suresh Shale basically because is, I mean, because he's married, married to, to a Sinhalese and Singhalese the children Buddhist. are Buddhist, he's not a. Uh, therefore, he's a patriot. He, therefore, he's a patriot. So any any I was just thinking. But I thought myself, he's a patriot because he's a super spy. Yeah, I was like he he is. Yeah. No, but I mean any 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 minority Sri Lankan watching that would have thought, however much we do to this country, we are not considered. Uh, patriots in this country so mm. that type of uh, 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 thinking mm. has done a grave damage to Sri Lanka and its future I mean we are I'm a single East Buddhist from the south mm. I'm very proud of my uh, religion my race my caste my my, my uh, about me but it doesn't mean that I am authorized to consider another person a second grade that is their country as well I mean uh, let's just look at it as a, a Muslim yeah. who's here if he goes to the Middle East do you think he'll be treated like one of them mm. if, he says, if he says okay I'm a Muslim I am part of your community no their country is also this even if a Tamil goes to India mm. will they be treated the same way this is their country as well indeed but of course all have to understand now even the now the the, the, the some certain Tamil politician the way they reacted uh, when uh, the the ceremonies were to be conducted in the temples in Jaffna is wrong because this this country is open for uh, any community to freely move about anywhere mm. I mean if they if they behave like that and if the, when the Sinhalese people down here see hears yeah. it what happens there'll be chaos there will be chaos so we have to be all be responsible and we have to be uh, contributing in equally and those extreme elements whether they are Sinhalese whether they are Muslim, whether they are Tamil or any other community should be dealt with, with otherwise, the same law. Yeah, the, the, the law must be the same and all should be dealt with this hate speech and speech that leads to division must be strictly controlled. Otherwise, we will not have a future as a country.
Tony Mawira Kodi, thank you very much for being on Newsline, and that's the way it was. It's now time for the prime time news, and of course, I do wish you a very good evening as much as you can, and God bless you all.